turn on studio. Is Moderna the Tesla of biotech? You might be thinking, no, jackass, Neuralink is the Tesla of biotech, to which I would say, take it down a notch. I'm entitled to my opinion. Neuralink makes tech that interacts with biology. Moderna, their tech literally is biology. mRNA is universally utilized to make all of the proteins inside of every cell. So in theory, you can use messenger RNA to make any protein inside of any cell in life. Our research engine is a critical piece of the infrastructure we have built to advance messenger RNA science for patients. Our research engine combines proprietary digital drug design tools and a highly automated production facility to enable us and our strategic collaborators to move mRNA medicine swiftly through the research stage. When the coronavirus thing first started, I did an episode of Knee the Curve on it, and that's when I first learned about Moderna, and I talked about it in that video. For $800, I bought 30 shares of Moderna and a Carnival cruise ship. Yeah, they're practically giving those away. Moderna stock is crushing it right now. Moderna is up 160% year to date. They're up almost 100% since I mentioned them a month ago. Most of their growth has happened post coronavirus. They just received almost a half a billion dollars from the government through the BARDA grant that is meant to accelerate the development of the coronavirus vaccine they've got in the works. But that's not the only thing they're up to. So in this video, I wanna talk about what it is they're doing, how it is that they're doing it, because if you don't understand a company, it's really tough to invest. It's easy to talk about Tesla, and people understand the environment issues, they see a sexy car, they want something fast and beautiful. So understanding Tesla as a company is a lot easier than understanding biotech companies. So today I want to break down the steps that I took to learn about Moderna in order to be comfortable investing. I get the broad idea of it. You need some specifically coded RNA. You get it to the DNA in our cells. It makes the DNA do a certain thing, make a protein that protects us. Okay, that's all fine and great, but how does it work? How do you make RNA? Apparently, to make custom RNA sequences, you have to first make custom DNA sequences, and then you use the regular cellular process by just adding some enzymes to separate the two and get RNA. So how do you make custom DNA? Well, one company is laser printing it. We make DNA and we sell it. Not that complicated. And lets everyone write interesting DNA programs, eventually allow DNA to become a consumer product. The DNA laser printer and this machine will produce more DNA in a single run than is produced in all the machines in the world in an entire year. And another company is using a microfluidics compartment. GenScript uses next generation CMOS technology to synthesize DNA on electrodes within a semiconductor chip placed in a chamber with precise reagent delivery to provide high quality DNA. And they zap the fluid to make it have certain properties that will molecule by molecule build a strand of DNA. Advanced technology utilizes DNA synthesis chemistry at a large scale, printing oligonucleotides individually on slides at high density. Electronic activation of individual electrodes creates a transient acidic environment, deprotecting the end of the DNA oligo and adding a single nucleotide to only the intended oligos. Awesome. So once that magic takes place, you've got to get the RNA that you've uh, 3D printed or concocted using some silicone wafer magic. Then you've got to get it into the body, into each cell. So how do you get the messenger RNA to, to, to actually enter the cell you need it to enter? What about re adverse reactions to it? What about it? I mean, messenger RNA breaks down very quickly from with, from enzymes. What, is it in a, a, a liposome? I love the way he asked that. Us normies talking to doctors, it's like, is it a liposome? Okay, you didn't even say liposome, right? So should we even be talking? It turns out that he was right. It's in a, it's in a liposome? We use lipids 
to put around the mRNA to protect it. Using machines like this, they create the oils and polymer-based solutions that naturally form coatings around the mRNA particles they've created so that they can be absorbed by the cells and then once they're in the cells, the coating degrades and releases the payload of mRNA. So messenger RNA is basically the blueprint for telling your cells what kinds of proteins to create. So messenger RNA, if we can control it, really we could just tell the body to do whatever we want it to do. We'll be in complete control. You could make bacteria that solve problems, that produce drugs, that produce things like oil uh, to replace the petrol that's dug out of the ground. This technology is going to allow us to actually bring back dinosaurs, bring back extinct species, and make life forms that help us live in space and go to other planets. The big idea behind all these DNA and mRNA companies is that we're turning the code of life into computer code, literally. Instead of ones and zeros, A's, T's, G's and C's. They want to use DNA to write simple, Lego-like functional components, inspired by, but not found in nature, and then run them in a cell instead of a computer. They call this re-engineered genetic engineering synthetic biology. This is the kind of crazy world we're living in where you can literally just get on the computer and scientists can digitally design and order mRNA constructs. They begin by selecting existing proteins to be further engineered, or they create novel proteins from existing domain scaffolds and other sequences. Proprietary algorithms consider sequence, structure, and other factors to identify mRNA sequences that are predicted to confer desired pharmacologic properties. Researchers can easily tailor specific properties of the mRNA and submit the order to our automated high-throughput production facility in Norwood, Massachusetts. We're all using things we don't understand at this point anyway. I don't know how this camera works. I don't know how my computer works. If you ask me to break it down and build it back up again, I could not do it. It's uh, at a certain point magic to me. I think it was Arthur C. Clarke that said, any sufficiently advanced technology appears to be magic. That's what we're dealing with with companies like Moderna. So because they didn't have any actual products on the market, my big question was, does it work? A lot of money is being thrown at these people from not just the government, but other very well-known, successful, and reputable pharmaceutical companies, Merck, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson, the list goes on. So now we just need clinical, unwavering results that say, without a doubt, that this is working to cure a certain disease. Their stock's doing good now. Imagine when just their first drug hits the market and is working. If it were just the coronavirus vaccine, I'd be like, nah, I'm not investing. But they've got so many more things in the works. They've got a bunch of things in phase two trials and even more in phase one trials. We're talking Zika, the flu, Epstein-Barr, tumors. They've got one for heart failure, autoimmune hepatitis, personalized cancer vaccine. And the very nature of the mRNA technology means that once it's proven to work, the amount of therapies and vaccines that they can make are, it's just such a widespread amount because the same technology is used to make every single one instead of like normal pharmaceutical companies that have to kind of reinvent the wheel with every new drug they make. mRNA is an information molecule. It's like software. It's a software of life. There are four letters that makes every one of our drugs. It's just the order of the letters that goes from product one to product two. So once you figure out how to make it work once, which were done, for example, for vaccines, then you can have a lot of new products coming very quickly. And the return on investments is really spectacular because you don't have to reinvent everything. Right. You just fly. That's how you can have 20 drugs in development out just a, a, in a few years' time? Correct. All right, let me know what you think about biotech stocks in general. I mean, do you even get it? I think that we're gonna see a new boom. In the next, like, decade, I think the new kind of big tech that's gonna take off is biotech. It's gonna be like the new internet. All the code that's being written is gonna be 
uh, biotech code, and we're gonna start seeing uh, people not just cure disease, but really enhance bodies. We're gonna be worried about you know, people doping and using biotech in the Olympics and professional sports. I think in the next 10 years, that's the kind of world we're gonna be living in. It's companies like this that are curing pandemics that's gonna help uh, pave the way. And this crisis is actually causing even more money to be focused into companies like this. So uh, like uh, Kathy Wood from ARK Invest says, uh, in times of crisis, they actually see uh, technology have even better success. And you can see it in the stock price of Moderna. So let me know in the comments what you think about all this. Uh, shout out to my patrons for letting me continue to do this during this shutdown. Uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, if you uh, like tech news and you like hearing it from a guy that uh, sort of knows what he's talking about, um, that really just, I'm just a fanboy. My goal is to be a space pirate. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to live quite a long time. So uh, I'm rooting for Moderna to help me make that happen. All right, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.